We are God with us. Emmanuel. Oh, I don't care what you're going through, what you are facing. Oh, my goodness. But God is with you. When you think he is not there, he is there the closest when you feel that he's not there. So we thank God for Emmanuel. Hallelujah. We're going to turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas to everyone again. And we thank God for the scripture. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the fact that you are with us. Even before the foundation of the world, God, you were there for us. Oh, for God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we thank God that we are celebrating his birth today. That he came in as a human child, as a baby. Oh, my God. He never lost his deity. (laughs) When he came, he was still God. And we are grateful for the master plan of redemption. We ask, O God, that you would anoint and bless the hearers, anoint your vessel, and God, we'll be so careful to give your name the praise, the glory, the honor belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 You may be seated. I would like to use as a topic, God with us. God with us. And the word with means beside. It also means carrying, holding as a companion. It also means to support. So when we say God is with us, it's more than just his presence, but he's literally carrying us. He is, you know, holding us. He's supporting us. And many times when we are in a chaotic situation, we feel as if he's not there. And we're wondering, and we'll be wondering, where is he? But just keep in mind that he is carrying you. He's carrying me. To have someone with you when facing a crisis or opposition gives you strength to become uh, and and, and able to conquer that which you are facing. There are times when we are confronted with problems on our jobs, in our homes, or wherever, and we are told by our coworkers or family members or church members or friends, do whatever you need to do to Take care of that situation, and I'll be there. If you speak up, I'll be in your corner. (laughs) And how many of you know, when those regiment of supporters, you know, somehow will have a quick case of amnesia, and you're left there alone to confront the issue? How many have ever experienced that in life? Where people would say, I will be with you, I'll stand with you, and when it comes to, you know, when the rubber meets the road, you can't find them. But see, our God, Emmanuel, is not like that. He promised never to leave us, nor to forsake us. To be with us through the hard times, the good times, the ugly times, the messed up times. Hallelujah. And we've experienced all those times in our lives. And God says, I'll be with you. I'll never leave you. He promised us never to leave us nor to forsake us. Hallelujah. When we look at Isaiah, 
This prophecy came 700 years way before Jesus came. Isaiah the prophet even prophesied in chapter 7 of Isaiah, verse 14, and it says that, uh, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now you just need to know who's with you. When we look at uh, verses 9 of Isaiah and verse 6, it says, For unto us a child, hallelujah, is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That is who is with us, the mighty God, the wonderful counselor, the prince of peace. Do you know him? Yes, yes. Do you know him? Do you know the God that is with you? Do you know the God that is with us? Yes. Hallelujah. God almighty. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus was God in the flesh. Thus God was literally among us. Through the Holy Spirit, Christ is present today in the life of every believer. He promised never to leave us nor forsake us, regardless to what we are confronted with. But do you know the God that is with you? Number one, the divine one is with us. Christ the Word. John, St. John 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. I'm going to read that, John 1 and 2. John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Christ the word is with us. Christ the truth is in us. Verse 14, John 14, it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And when we go to verse chapter 14, verse 6, and it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And this is St. John chapter 14 when he was telling his disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. Yes, yes. Oh, we're living in troubling times. Yes, are. People are going through. People are hurting. People are in pain. People need Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But we have a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Do you know him? Say, I know a man from Galilee. Yes. If you in sin, he'll surely set you free. Yes. Oh, 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 do you know him? Do you know him? Yes. <laughs> I know a man from Galilee. And he's the one that's with us. Christ the word and Christ the truth. Not Buddha, but Jesus. Hallelujah. So let us consider the times God is with us when in trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's with us when we are in trouble. John 14 and 1 says, man that is born, I mean, Job 14 and 1 says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. How many of you have experienced trouble? Yes. A lot of trouble. Yes. Full of trouble. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder where is it coming from. Yes. But trouble. Trouble in my way. 
those quartets would sing sometimes, yeah. trouble in my way, and they start patting our hands. But look, but God, he says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but look, God says, but I deliver you out of them, what? Some? Just a few? He said, many are the affliction of the righteous, but I will deliver you out of them all. Now, let's look at some of the types of troubles that exist today. Hatred, racism, ungratefulness, ungrateful children, drugs, ab abusiveness, alcoholism, diseases, and infidelity. All these things are troubling times. No food, no shelter, no place to live. Troubles. Psalms 34, 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord, hallelujah, deliver us out of them all. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9 says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Aren't you glad about that? Oh my God, there are times we've been cast down. There are times we've been distressed. There are times we have been perplexed. But in spite of all of that, we are not destroyed. Satan's desire is to dis destroy all of us. He desires to sift us as wheat, just like he wanted to do Peter, you know. But God said, I'm going to pray for you, Peter, that Christ, that, that, I, that you will be strengthened. All of us that are going through hard times and tough times and troubling times, it's not even about you, but it's about the souls and the people you're going to bless because you're going to be able to share with those ones that are suffering just like you're suffering right now. God brought me through. God took me through. When I thought I couldn't make it, God made a way for me. He's a way maker. He's that way maker. He will take you through. And when you think you can't take the next step, he will carry you. Yes. Hallelujah. Ask me how I know. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter 5 and 7 says, Cast in all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Psalms 3 and 3, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. Oh, don't, don't, don't hold your head down. Lift your head up. Jesus is the lifter of your, of your head. David was so depressed, and, and he says, why so, you know, uh, uh, disquieted? What's going on with you? He said, look to God. He's the lifter up of our heads. He's the healer of our countenance. I think it was Nehemiah went, uh, uh, went before the king um, and the king was saying to him, why are you so sad? Yes. What's your problem? He says, my city is in ruins. That's why I'm sad. Some of, some of our cities are in ruins yes. and we are yes. sad. We are heartbroken. Our families are destroyed. You know, things are going on and we are sad. But God is there to be the lifter up of your head. Emmanuel, God is with us. Yes. God is with you. Yes. Hallelujah. Psalms 30 and 5. It confirms every word of God is pure. He is a, he is a shield unto them that put thou trust in him. Now, the word trust means to take refuge in, confide in, feel safe, be confident, secure, to be careless, unworried. The Revised uh, Standard Version says, renders the word trust as rely on. <laughs> the, basis, the basic idea is associated with the firmness or solidity. So God with us, the word expresses the sense of well-being, which results from knowing, 
that we don't have to worry. Now, Deuteronomy 21, number, my point two is that God gives courage in life's battles. Isaiah 43 and 2. I'm going to read that. Isaiah 43 and 2. Thank you, Lord. Are you glad about it? Yes. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43 and 2. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 43 and 2, it says, When thou passest through the waters, mm, I will be with thee. Yes, yes. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Oh, you're not going to smell like what you've been through. Hallelujah. Many of us have, have been through stuff and going through stuff, but I tell you, when you come through it, you're not going to even look like what you've been through. You're not going to even smell like what you've been through. Hallelujah. There will be no, no scent or no singe of your hair. But God is going to carry you and take you through. Just like the three Hebrew boys yes. when they were thrown into that fiery furnace. Hallelujah. Yes. They said, they, oh, there's a fourth person in there. It must be the son of God. Yes. Hallelujah. It must be the living and true God. There's a fourth person in the fire. You won't come through what you, you won't look like what you've been through. God's going to give you beautiful ashes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 10, chapter uh, 10, verse 13. That hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to run from temptation. God is also with us when we are weak. You know, uh, Isaiah 40, uh, chapter 40, verses 28 through 30 says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Yes. Are you weak today? Jesus. That's a promise you can stand on. Hallelujah. Can stand on it. Yes. That's why the Bible says, let the weak say that I'm strong. Because God's grace is sufficient. Paul was praying for that thorn in his flesh thorn in his side, and he prayed two or three times, and, and God didn't answer his prayer. But then God turned around and told him, said, look, I want you to know that my grace is sufficient. And then he tells us that the weak said that they're strong. Let the poor said that they're rich, because we are. What a great exchange. Yes. <laughs> what a great exchange. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. My sin for eternal life. He took on our sin that we might have eternal life when we receive and accept his finished work. What a blessing. He's also with us when we are sick. Now keep in mind, God with us. He's, he's with us when we're in trouble, when we're weak, when we are sick. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, but he was wounded oh, for our transgressions. Are you sick today? Hallelujah. Are you sick today and need healing in your body? 
or stand on this word, Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Finally, when you consider the attributes of God, you'll have that assurance, regardless to what you're facing or going through, that God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. He's omnipotent, having infinite power. Omniscient, all-knowing. Ooh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Is he mighty to you? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Are you serving a mighty God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When the enemy comes in and tries to discourage you, having you looking at your circumstance, just tell him he's a liar. If you need peace, just pray to Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. God is peace. He's going to be, look, he, the Prince of Peace. If you need food, clothes, or shelter, just pray to Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. If you want to be a conqueror, pray to Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner, meaning that we are winners. And if you want healing in your body, pray to Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. If God is with us, who can be against us? Yes. God with us. Yes. God with you. God is willing instantly to heal. As I'm closing out, God wants instantly to heal. He's wanting to heal. He's not only willing to heal, he's wanting to heal, and he's waiting to heal. God is not only willing to save, but he's wanting to save, and he's waiting to save. God is not just willing to deliver. Hallelujah! God is willing to deliver. God is willing and wanting to deliver, and God is waiting to deliver. Yes. Spiritually, physically, and emotionally. God is with us. If you're listening to this message today, and you have not received Emmanuel, this is an opportunity for you today to accept Jesus into your life. If you would pray this prayer with me, Father God, I believe in your son Jesus, that he came to earth and he died on the cross that I might be saved. Jesus, come and live <laughs> on the inside of me. Be my Lord, my master, my friend. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Yes. If you've prayed this prayer, you are on the best journey of your life that will lead to eternal life. The church is rejoicing with you. Yes, yes. The angels in heaven are rejoicing with you. Let someone know that you've accepted the Lord Jesus as a witness. Go to our website, www.rcfchurch.org. Leave us an email, and we'll be willing to send you information to help you on this new journey. With everyone standing, God 